Hey guys, and how's it going? I picked up this brake a couple of months ago from an estate sale along with a bunch of other equipment. And I've done some work with it, done some sheet metal work as far as body panels, that kind of thing. And it came with a bunch of dies. Unfortunately, it did not come with a much of a bottom die selection, but a fairly decent upper die. So right now, it's a 15 ton brake, uh, flywheel type. There's all different kinds of hydraulic. It's a press brake. There's other types. There's a box pan brake that you run by essentially human power. And anyway, this one is a flywheel brake. Got a motor, it runs a flywheel. It's up to speed. You hit a pedal. And it fires it. 15 ton may sound like a lot, but it's not. It's uh, fairly light. So it's good right now with the die that's in it for 18 gauge, 20 gauge, probably 18 for the four foot length of it. I could bend some panels with it, but anything more than that is, it's not gonna be able to do it with the die setup that I have. So I grabbed some stock to try and make a bottom die, and that's what this video is gonna be about. Let's get set up, show you a few things, and we'll start getting into, see if we can make something that will function for I don't know, eighth inch material. Here's a couple of pieces that I've bent up in the past. I use for just kind of setting up the dies. You can see this is 20 gauge. I believe this piece right here is 18 gauge. I believe this is 20. So it's no problem bending fairly long lengths like the one that's over here. I could do that four foot length. But when you start getting a material like this, you can see the difference. That's, that's eighth inch. Could I bend a two inch section of it? Yeah, not a problem. But if I want to bend a four foot section of it, it's just not going to happen. And I'll show you on the dies why that is. So here's a couple of dies and give you an idea of what's going on. This is the setup that I have now. And the distance between here and here is roughly a half inch, maybe a little bit larger than that. And the top die pushes off this edge and this edge and pushes in the middle. Well, on thicker material, it just does not have the push to push the material down in between this die. So on thicker material, what you want is this V to be greater or further apart. And that's what you can see on this die over here. So this setup over here would be for thicker material. You can see the distance is you know, more than double across that. And that should give us a fairly uh, nice bend on thicker material. Again, I don't know. I haven't even tried it on this machine, so we don't know. That's the whole idea of us trying to make a die. But these pieces that you see I have here on bottom dies, this is all I have. This is probably a 16 inch long piece. I don't have anything to go all the way across. So that's what we're going to go try to create. As far as the top die on the rack behind you, right there is probably not in focus. But this die right here is a four foot section of roughly this material. So we have a top die, we just don't have a bottom one. So what I wanna try and work with is I have a piece of angle. And this angle, I would like to try to weld to something that can sit on the track of the bottom die. This is a piece of half inch. This half inch should fit in this groove right here. So this is the space that we have to work with. Normally there's a shoulder on the die and it kind of leans on these two. My thought is we have to cut or rip that section down. It's three inches long. We need roughly, I think from there to here is roughly about two inches. So anyway, about one and three quarters because the thickness of the V we still have to put on top. We want that to be the total stacking height. So I want to try to rip that three inch by half inch in half put that in here and possibly what we'll do is we'll get some uh, sections to scab on the side of it after we level where it is and we'll weld it to the side. So it won't be a constant shoulder like that, but you know, I think if we can get away with say some two inch chunks every, every three inches or so, that should be okay. We're going to go find out. Add a little bit of light to the viewing pleasure here. Most of the top dies are roughly four and a half inches. Most of the bottom dies are, get in there, say two and a half, two and a half to the top. And the lower shelf or table moves up and down about four inches of travel. But most of that travel is already used up. So just how this die is set up, there's probably about another inch of throw that we can lower it. So we can't use that three inch piece all by itself. 
okay, you know what I'm talking about. So this can still come down this distance, and it's probably about an inch, but it can go up quite a bit. And with the the size of the top of the die when you get into big bending, bigger material, it can be hard after you make the bend to get the material out. As long as you're not deeper than that throat, you can just slide it out the side. But at some point, if you bend a piece that's you know two foot by two foot, you're not going to be able to feed it out through the uh, face of the machine. I mean, you can slide a die out, but you know we're trying to avoid that. Yeah, let's slide them out. Again, the top die is going to be the same dimension. We're going to want to try to mimic or imitate or copy something along that line is what we're looking for. So what I'm hoping for is this piece of metal that goes in the bottom. It's not too sloppy. Side to side. It's got a little bit of play in it. But we do have set screws you can lock it in with and take out that play. That should be pretty good. It looks like it's fairly straight. I was worried about that too. I'm going to bend to it so it wouldn't go in. I'm going to say we try ripping it right in half. I have a plasma cutter. I think that's going to be kind of bringing it to its limits. But we're going to give it a try. See if we can slice that thing in half. So here's what the setup is. It's clamped off on uh, my forklift. We got a piece of angle using for a straight edge. And we're going to drag along. This is one and a half inches. This should actually come out to so probably about eh, one and a quarter, maybe, after we rip it. And then the other one will be a little on the taller side. We'll kind of pick and choose when we're done after which one we want to go with after we size it up in the break. Probably the shorter one, I would think, but uh, I don't want to make them both the same size. As far as the plasma cutter, the Hypertherm 30. XP. It's a inverter type plasma cutter. And someone was asking on the other video, how come you're able just to drag it? The tip that is on it is kind of serrated, so it, it's, it has like its own built-in standoff. Works grid on thin sheet metal. What it's going to do on half inch, we're not sure. We're going to go find out right now. Well, we're definitely going to turn that all the way up to max. And that can run on 110 or 220, and it's definitely it's on 220. So let's see what we get. Make sure my welding helmet's on where it should be. Okay. Did my first pass. There's a couple of spots where it didn't go. You can kind of see when sparks aren't going through and it kicks out the side. Let's give it a little twist first. I don't think. I think the ends are kind of holding it. Let's give it a little. Think it'll go with a hammer? You think I'm gonna hit it, both clamps are gonna fly off and the whole thing's gonna land on the floor. Let's get my toes out of the way. There we go. We got her. Got a lot of edge cleaning to do, but we got it. Yeah, you can see I was getting a decent cut. You know, again, we're at the max of what it can do. And then I came from the other direction. So this is where I came from the other direction. You see it's a fairly decent cut. And then as the plasma cutter started getting hot, I probably should have let it cool down because its performance started going away. Nothing a grinder can't fix. 
All right, so I went and I hit it with a grinder. And again, that's the side that's gonna be facing down. It's not gonna be touching the base of it. I'm not that concerned about how clean it is. Again, we pushed it to its limits, but the issue I do have is that. Yeah, it really warped it. That's a good half inch on that side. And probably just shy of that over here. So I was gonna think about trying to figure out how to, about, how to go about bending it. I think we might do is maybe we'll just put it right in the press brake and we'll put the angle on top and see if we could run the top die down into it. If it straightens itself out under pressure, we may be able to weld. It's gonna be this way. We may be able to weld the angle to the top of it and it may straighten itself out. So I'm gonna go get set up in there. We'll give it a shot, see what happens. Yeah, if I had to do it again, I would definitely do it differently. Probably what I should have done was probably cut maybe 10 inch intervals so it couldn't spread apart. Let's go run the brake so it's all the way down. wonder if I should put some spacers under it on each side, change the top die out for a flat die, maybe give it a give it a hammer. You know what I mean? So that it's floating up a little bit. Then we'll hit it, see if we'll kind of give it a little bit of a bend. I don't want to make it all kind of wavy though. Let's see what happens right now. Go we'll change out that top die to something I can give it a good smack with. And like I said, we'll put a couple shims on each end of it. Try that. Learning curve, just like anything in life, right? I kind of saw it too when I was doing, I saw the end spread now. It's just that. It's a die with no bevel on it. I have to run that up to it. bottom is all the way up. We may have to add something a little extra in there. Let's go run in a cycle, see what happens. That's pretty good. It bottomed out, you hear it? All right, so I'm going to run that down a little. Find a couple shims to put under each side of this. And we'll give it a hit, see if we can make her a little less bowy. So I got an Allen wrench stuck at each side, shimming it up.
just gonna hammer it, but it seems like we gotta leave it like that. Let's see. Use this as a straight edge. Wait for it to be done spinning. We still got a, a big bow, but let's just see if that did anything for us. It is better. I want to say about half of it is out of it. say that is pretty damn good. I think we'll get the rest of it. I think if we press it together when we're welding, we have it. We got about an eighth inch over there. Yeah. Might be able to shift this over and give it another hit, but I don't know. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to give it a bow the other way. I think maybe we'll we'll kind of live with what we got right now. What do you think? I think you can pop that top die in. Normally you drop the bottom in first. Because it's fatter. That's not gonna work for me. I put the regular die back in the bottom and the fatter die is gonna go on top. I'm gonna lock that one into place. Normally you put a bottom die in, but we don't have one built yet. So I'm just gonna use, use that bottom one for a mock-up. the angle too. Try to stack all those pieces up together. Let's see what it looks like. We need to run that down. See that top die. Call that good. Let's, uh, let's hammer it a couple times. Now that top is seated. So the top one is seated. The bottom one, throw in there. And let's see if we can lay that angle in there. I haven't prepped it yet, but I just want to get an idea of what we're working with. I'm gonna run that up by hand. We'll close up that gap. Let's go see how that looks. So the other problem is 
course, I got slag on the end of it yet, but the V in the bottom isn't quite as sharp as the V on the die. The lighting's got gotcha. you. Maybe we'll take an angle grinder, try to run it down the center of it, make a little bit of a, a relief. Looks decent though, it's got a fairly tight fit on both sides. I'm right, gonna go take that apart again. We're gonna take this out, clean it up. So I have a new grinding disc on it and the corner's very square. So that's what I'm gonna try doing. I'm gonna try running it down maybe this way. Then I'll come back and I'll try running it down this way and see if I can just open that void a little bit on the bottom. Time for a little shaky cameras because I have to hand hold you to see what I'm talking about. Got everything kind of cleaned up. The bottom edge of this is, is prepped. This is prepped. There's an Allen wrench stuck in at about an inch on each side because we know we still have a bow on that bottom piece. So my thought is we're going to go run that die down. I think we're touching in the middle pretty good. A couple spots where it's seen air gap there. I think that's where I kind of overbent it. But we're gonna run it down by hand. See if we can get that as straight as possible. The V came out pretty good. Uh, it's all on the dark side again. Anyway, I'll bring you back. You can see that in a minute. I'm gonna run that down, clamp all that together. We're gonna to eyeball it. There you go, now you can kind of see the, the gap going down it. And if we're happy with that, we're gonna throw a bunch of tacks down the sides. Get this piece and this piece to be one then we can kind of come back, drop this down a little bit more into the bottom, and we'll weld some blocks on the side of that for support. I don't even know if it's that's. I'm just doing it because all the other dies are set up that way with the offset. I don't know if you can rest on the bottom here and be okay, or it's, you know, this, I would think the, it might be more of a necessity hit here because I would wonder over time if these walls would want to crush in on you. So that's where I'm going to mimic it. Let's run that up. That is the bottom die. Have him playing it. Yeah, look at so now you look at the I gotta back it off because the, the middle has a big gap in it. Let's go to that's kind of level. I think I got it decent. I'm going to do a call right there. I'm going to run these screws in to support this. I'm going to make sure my, my V is pretty much dead center. And then we're going to go tack on each side of it. Make sure that we're happy with that. And kind of jump back and forth. See if we can get that all welded up. Yeah, I ended up working with these bottom screws to align the dies up. Get them center over each other. And now it looks a little better than what it was. This was floating. That's what that clicking was before. It was actually the whole bottom section was loose. So you can adjust the die and then you can adjust the die holder on it also. Well time. Let's make some sparks. Let me try attacking the ends first. So I think if I try to get one here, by the time I get to the other side, it's going to want to roll a little bit. So if you can get the ends, maybe it'll help it from tilting.
we get the other side. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go buzz that thing all the way around now. Dance back and forth between each side of it. See so if you can get it all welded up. It might go and weld it all the way across, but for now I'm just going to leave it. It's decent. That should hold this. That middle one's up pretty ugly. We'll blame that on someone else. So it's still shimmed up on the Allen wrenches. We need to make our blocks yet. What I think I want to do is maybe I'll let it down all together or maybe I'll let it down on something really low like a couple of eighth inch blocks maybe shims on each side. <sighs> That's not gonna work. I want to before I commit to well it's gonna be whatever angle it's on anyway. As you can see what what I'm thinking. It's cooling off. What I'm thinking is I wanted to kind of punch a piece of metal. And if I need to pitch it one way or another, I can, but I don't think we're gonna be able to do that. You can hold on a second. It's getting tired of talking with the fan on the welder. So a couple things are going on at the same time. It's an old machine and it probably sat in a factory from the 60s to the 80s, just punching out parts over and over again. So the top die holder is, is racky. It's got up above here, where those, see those two holes are? There's like two cams, it rotates on two cams going around. And all that stuff's kind of getting sloppy over time, it's just the nature of it. So if you just try to level if you make like an air gap between the top die and the bottom and say, okay, I'm going to leave uh, an eighth inch on each side of it and then we're going to go weld the bottom so it's even with that. If you go to stamp a piece of metal, it won't be a 90 going all the way across. It'll be, a, you'll set up so you have a bend of a 90 on one end, but by the time you get to the other end, it'll be like a 75 degree. Because when it gets pressure on it, it's... It's essentially it's sagging on one side. So you using that sag when you go and you hit it, it hits it, it straightens itself out and it hammers itself down the rest of the way. Now you can adjust the bottom. You can rack the bottom a little bit one way or another. And that is done, pitch you down a little bit. Right in the very center of your screen there, there's a little collar. That collar right there, you can take a set screw out or even loosen it. It's got like a half moon in it and you could turn it so one cam turns and the other one doesn't, you can kind of influence it a little bit. But that's kind of a pain in the ass every time you change the die. You want to try to be as close as you can. Right now it was set up for that half inch die. So when it's uh, punched, when it punched, when it bent a uh, piece of like 18 gauge four foot long, it was pretty even along the, the length of it. And that's what I set it for. You can see some magic marker lines on it where it was and it was fine tuning it from there. So I wanted to be able to punch a piece of metal before I weld a bunch of blocks. Try and make a, a bunch like that up. I'll cut a bunch up. I'm gonna weld them each side of them and have them sit on this saddle. But I can't do that. It's just because right now there's nothing supporting it. So even if I go to hit something, it's just not gonna be level. So what I think I'm gonna just do is probably get these Allen wrenches out of here, replace them with like a a 16th or an eighth inch Allen wrench. I'll slide them in. It's kind of, uh, there's really not too much else I can really do to figure out a way around it. As I said, it'd be nice if I can go punch a piece of metal. What if, what if we were to take them right out? I gotta loosen these up. 
take it right out, maybe set it right now. That's still not going to work because you don't know if the center is touching or not. See, we just let it sit right on the bottom. If we see one side's more than the other, we can favor one side a little bit, but that's... Oh well, we're going to wing it, see what we get. She says that one wrench is out. I'm going to run that up. I don't think we're going to get too much of a bend. I'm going to hit it with a sharpie right in the center. We'll watch that line. We'll see if that line kind of sinks in or not. All right, let's go put a line right there. And then we'll crank up on it. Yeah, right there, it's starting to disappear. So we'll call it right there. It's a straight line. Anything more than that, we're, we're bellying. bellying. Yeah, you know. <laughs> So I'm going to go probably with a spacing something like that. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to see on the back side. Probably do the same. I'll probably dance around from one side to the other. Get one weld to weld the other. And I'm just going to hit them. Just going to hit them on that side and that side. That's pretty much about it. Uh, maybe later we can come back and buzz the two of them. Not sure. Undecided at this moment. I think before I weld them, I'm going to take some sandy splatter. And basically, what you do is you put it on surfaces that you don't want splatter that you're welding something to get on, and then weld. You know, the little ball welds itself down. So I just want to catch the bottom surface. I'm just going to wipe this surface down, not touch the back. Just for any overspray that we get. It kind of gives us a fighting chance We're not making a mess of that bottom. I'll do the same on front and back. It's all welded up. We see we fire it up. The Allen wrenches are out of the side. Uh, can we crank it down first, maybe? I'm not sure. I think we are all the way down. Pretty good. It goes past than that. I expected to bend less than that. That's right. You could always put it on a corner of a bench and you hit it with a hammer too. Let's go try it with a thicker piece. Back it off a little. Go with a piece of eighth inch. It's about max for this machine, I would think. Yeah, past the 90. You're right, back it off some, we can get less. Let's try it. Yeah, there we go. That 
gave us a 90. And a decent corner too. What I'm looking to get out of this is like frame rail repair, that kind of thing. I'm gonna be able to make a four foot piece if we can. And this is about the thickest haul I'd ever go, end up going to. All right, you wanna try doing one that's full length? <laughs> it's a little low. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a piece of 11 gauge Galvi. I say we just go for it. It's a little longer than the top die, but. Ready? I'm looking for, right now, how consistent the bend is down the length of it, like we talked about. The other thing too, I could put shims underneath the die, little metal shims on one end or in the middle. I would say, actually, that's pretty good. That looks... Pretty even right down it. I'm gonna put a gauge on it. I like that. I think it might have worked out just fine. Awesome. Wanna hit it harder? <laughs> Let's just hit it one more time and not change it. Sometimes you get more each time it hits it. And then we'll go a little tighter if we need. And moved it a little bit more. All right. Four foot piece of galvy on a 90. Better. I could see in the middle. No, I know what it is. It's just I didn't hit it straight. So there's, there's more metal here then on the other side, so it's giving them the illusion that it was uh, bent less. It actually looks pretty, pretty good. Have a light side up, huh? Hit it again. Even more. get square so I'm feeling this piece of metal I'm like that's not I feel like 11 it's marked 11 it's marked 16 <laughs> so we're not bending, we're not bending 11 yet not that thick and we are almost there Going for it or breaking it, one of the two. That made some good noises. <laughs> Alright. We're over 90 now. Now we got it. Yeah, now it's over. So we know we have the capacity of getting it. I meant 90 right there. We have the capacity of getting it on 16. Now let's try it with a piece of 11. I don't want to make a mess. Okay, now that's a piece of 11. <laughs> Eighth inch thick. Let's back her off. Turn. I might want to stand back on this one. What do you think? <laughs> Can I reach the pedal from back here? It's ought to break some stuff. Yeah, that's taxing it, ain't it? But that looks 
pretty good. Yeah, that's got it. And it you can't do much more than that, as you heard. It was screaming. It stalled it right down. Good. Met our goal. I'm happy for that. And it was uh, 36 bucks worth of material to go and do that. I like it. And I'm going to probably do another one with a little smaller. Instead of being two inches across, maybe an inch and a half across. The problem with the fat of the bottom die is the, the further away the next bend you can make. Let me find something to explain it. So, if you make a bend here, you have to be half, more than half the die away for the next bend. Or else where you made a bend will fall, fall into the void of the die. If you piece of metal, you stamp it in the center, you have to rest on out here. So you have to be at least that distance away for your next follow-up end. Some, yeah, and some applications you need that. You need, you try to make a tight little corner. Most of the frame stuff that I'm gonna make, again, more like patches, or you can make like maybe an L. Make two, uh, two L's, put them together, well, you know, two angles, weld them together, you can make a box, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna make another die a little smaller and I'm gonna cut it up. And you're like, why are you gonna cut it up? So you cut dies for, if you're gonna make a box, hold on. Sorry, my battery went kapooey. So you cut dies, mostly the top one, but if you're making a box, so you bend a piece of metal, and they're gonna like a cereal box, but then you gotta get the edges to roll up and they're on an angle. You need a corner for that excess material to hang past. Well, if you're doing one, just one side, it's okay. You can kind of let it hang off the end of the die. But if you're doing a, a, a pan, making a pan with four corners, you're gonna flip up. You need whatever the width is, say it's a 12 by 12 pan. You need a top die that's 12 inches wide so that one lip can go here and the other lip can fall in on the other corner. So you cut dies up. And here is an uh, example. Here's the upper die. And you pretty much go in like one, two, four, I think it's like eight, ten. You can keep doubling yourself because you, you can change the width within an inch by different combinations. You know what I mean? However you mix it together, you can get, uh, you know, you can get 12 inches as one 12 inch piece or a six, a four, a two put together, you know what I mean? All the way up to, you know, 47 inches. So that's the combination there. And then you do the same with bottoms. Here's the, uh, the this is all the, the smaller die stuff. Um, this and there is, the bottom was already cut in two. It could probably use to have one of these probably cut one more time, but every time you gotta go use the bottom, you gotta slide all the pieces in. So I have a, Another fat die top, we'll cut that up so that we have the same setup for the larger scale dies that I have. That one is that one right down there below. So we'll cut that one up and I'll make another bottom one up and I'll cut that up. So I'll have the two setups. So I'm happy, that worked out good. I have the capacity of bending a four foot piece of uh, eighth inch. Yeah, that was my goal. <laughs> yeah, this 15 tons sounds like a lot. It's not. It's, you know, it's a, it's a lot uh, of work for what this thing is doing. I'm not going to, it's not like I'm going to be doing it in production. I'll make a piece, what, once every six months of something like that. So it's not like it's going to be getting, punching out tons of pieces, you know, as far as how long it has to hold up. I think it'll be fine. I caught the upper rail on each one of them too to give more support. Yeah, bent it nice and even the whole length. I, was, I thought we were gonna have problems with that. That worked out good. 
the other side. All right. We done? <laughs> Can we call it? I think we're good. All right. All right. Guys, thanks for hanging out. I enjoyed doing this and uh, hope you liked uh, hanging out with me and uh, trying to figure it out. So until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye. I just wanted to add, I know I was forgetting something. So the bottom, this fat setup, you really don't need it for the 18 gauge and up. The other die setup is fine for that. This is more for the thicker stuff. So it was over bending the 20 gauge, but I should be using the other setup before doing that. It's just not the right size tooling for the right process, you know.